Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing on this fantastic Sunday uh, evening? This evening, I nearly said afternoon there for some weird reason. It is Sunday, the 5th of June, 2022. We have had here in the UK a very long weekend, and it has been most, most appreciated by many, I'm sure. Uh, unfortunately for me here in the uh, Adventure Girl podcast, I've been on call, so... Not quite as lucky as I might have been or would have liked. Not as much free time as I would have liked. Uh, instead, we we have managed to actually go live here from the studio this week. So that is always a bonus. Anyway, let's get on with what we're going to be doing today. Now, a little bit later on, I'm asking the question, was, um, do you grow your plants from seeds or do you buy them from a garden centre? This was a question asked in our Facebook group. I think it was by Kate, if I remember correctly. And it's something that we're going to debate a little bit later on, I hope. Uh, before that, I'll go through what I've been up to over this last week. But first, have we got anybody actually out there? Uh, and yes, Bally Cillian is out there. Good evening, Richard and the Veg Growing Army. Good evening to you. Adrian is out there. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, Philly SBB. Hello, everyone. Very busy day in the allotment. What have you been up to? Let us know. Um, Oracle is out there. Hello, Army. Hope everyone has had a fantastic day and enjoyed the Queen's Jubilee weekend. Uh, yes, um, Queen's Jubilee weekend was been fantastic, got to say. Jenny, evening, everyone. Hope you've all had an amazing weekend. Indeed, have you had an amazing weekend? Uh, Anna Jones, good evening to you. Evening, gardeners. Argrave Gas, good evening, everyone. Hope you've had a great week. Good evening to you. Graham Arnold is out there. Good evening to you. Uh, Margaret Peacock, good evening to you. Uh, Turbo Stream, good evening to the Veg Army. Good evening to you. Um, have I said Anna Jones? Uh, yes, I did. I said Anna Jones earlier. Uh, Amanda Joy, good evening to you. Lovely to see you. Um, Rebecca Hawkins, good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Uh, Kate Spratt, good evening to you. Good evening, Veg Army. Stuart Jackson, evening, Richard and the Veg Army. Hope everyone is well. Um, oh, where were we? Where were we? It's just skipped a load of comments there. Um, da, 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 Ian Beddoes has joined. Good evening to you. Um, what else? Not just Green Fingers UK blog. Good evening to you. That's Lisa, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, good evening to you. Uh, Beatrice, good evening to you. Richard Gordon, good evening to you. And Ian Suggett, good evening to you. So, what have you been up to over this last week uh, in your plot? So, I'll start off with what I've been up to. So, um, as I said, I've been on call this weekend, so I haven't been able to do anywhere. Can anybody hear me? Am I back? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Um, don't know what happened there. Something, something went a bit weird. Yes, you are back. Yes, I am back. Thank you very much. I should explain uh, the Veg Grower podcast. There, I have got a producer on board who is sat up there and seeing what is happening. So, um, uh, somebody helping me out there. Uh, in case you haven't guessed, it's Amanda. So, what? yes, I was saying, what have I been up to over this last week? Well, um, obviously, work during the week. and you don't get much time in the evenings. Pop down the allotment to try and do just a bit of weeding and watering. It's been pretty dry until this weekend, to say the least. So, Thursday was my only day that I have had off work. And I spent most of the day building an extension to my chicken run. Now, this has given my, my my chickens an extra two metres squared of space. So they're very, very happy with that. Um, and it's uh, from Omelette, which I'm a big fan of Omelette for chicken runs. And it's just giving them more space and secure, keeping them away from Roxy and everything. I've done a bit of overtime to pay for this. It's not cheap, to say the least. But 
you know what, with the flock down that we've had over this last winter, we wanted to give our chickens a bit more space over this winter. So yes, Thursday was spent building that, getting that into place. It's fitted in nicely and we've managed to keep most of the herbs where they are. The only thing we've lost is some of the, the meadow seeds that we planted there, the, the wild flowers, which never really got established. And we're going to look at how we can work on with that. Now, throughout May, I have been practicing no mow May. So Saturday, I, what that meant is not cutting the grass at all at home in our, our, our plot at home in order to encourage the wildflowers to grow. Saturday, May was over with, so it was time we to cut the grass. And I did that rather, well, it took a while, but we got there. Quite a few batteries we went through because the grass had got so long. We didn't really see many of wildflowers really get going, though, I'll be honest, here at home. It just looked a bit messy for my liking. And I don't know if that's me being a bit um, uh, pedantic or something, but I did I did find it just looked a little bit messy and, and didn't really get the wildflowers going. My wife and I popped to Brighton earlier today and we saw them, saw wildflowers there really getting established and growing well. So... It kind of popped this no mo made to shame. Anyway, grass was cut, used the grass clippings as a mulch and in various places uh, so it doesn't go to waste. We've also sown some peas, some more herbs, uh, various things like that. Today I popped to the allotment and as soon as I got to the allotment, I got called out. So I've rushed in and got some beans planted and some sweet corn, uh, tidied up the greenhouse quickly and then I'm going to have to go there during the week. Hopefully tomorrow morning I'm going to get down there and do a few more bits. So what has everybody else been up to? Uh, Turbo Stream. Been raining here in Birmingham, which was welcome. The allotment was very dry last night. Yes, we had a bit of rain last night uh, and, and the night before. It very, very welcome because it has been so, so dry. Also filled up our water butts nicely as well. Stuart, no gardening for me this week and for the next couple, but the plants are still selling thanks to my wife. So Stuart was in hospital the other day. Hope you are recovering nicely. He messaged me and I've told him to take it easy and not to push himself too hard. So that's why he's not doing much gardening and I don't blame him. Uh, what else has anybody else? Um, Adrian says, looks like Richard is not live for 58 minutes. God knows what's going on there then. Uh, Jenny, by chance, I have to be sowing seeds while watching. Best way to spend the evening. Composting coffee is not the best, though. No, compost in coffee is not the best because coffee has contains caffeine and caffeine is a natural uh, seed inhibitor. It prevents seeds from germinating. Bit of useless information for you, but something I thought you might like to know. Kate, not as much done down the allotment. Planted up some seeds though, as we got ourselves a beautiful new tortoise. So planting all the salads and flowers we are going to grow for his food. Fantastic. I like the idea of growing food for your animals. We we try on um we try and, and incorporate our our chickens as much as we can and feed them as much as we can as well with lettuces and things, provided we're not wasting our food, more importantly. Um, we like to give them a lot of our kitchen scraps when we can. Turbo stream. This week has been mainly streaming and weeding. Now my camper van is gone. I can concentrate on the plot and home garden this summer. Yes, I'm sorry to hear about your camper van, but streaming, uh, working on your garden and home plot, I hope, makes up for it. A bally sea. You mentioned up the raised beds on my plot. Timber rotten. I'm going to replace over the winter, but timber is too expensive, so going to do it using COC. I'm not sure what COC is. Um, if you can let me know, that'd be great. Turbo stream. I doubt I will do no mo May again. Lawn looked a white mess, surrounded by all the flowers in the borders. Similar to how I felt. I mean, it was good for the wildlife, don't get me wrong, but not so good for aesthetics uh please pass on my get better wishes i think that was to Stuart. um get well soon from jenny there uh, amanda has been clearing planting and mulching in the poly tunnel planting out some sweet peas and sunflowers tidying the shed and clearing some rubbish a busy day today that sounds very 
very busy indeed, Amanda. I think you're putting us all to shame with how much you've done there. Uh, Tommy Stream, hope you're okay. So your best wishes for speedy recovery, indeed. Beatrice is mainly weed implanting out and sowing more seeds. Excellent. I'm pleased to hear that a lot of people are sowing seeds. I always feel that June comes along, people stop sowing seeds. There's still so many things that we can still sow. All going well after my op from Stuart. Not even allowed to make a cup, so I'm doing as I'm told. I'm pleased to hear that. Uh, Bally Celine, going to replace my wooden beds over the winter as they are rotten, but timber so expensive, so I'm measured up. I'm going to use concrete building blocks. We'll buy a few each month. Yes, I know what you mean about the price of wood. I've been looking at it because I wanted to get some new wooden beds built on my plot, but the price of wood has made it almost too expensive. I'm still thinking over the winter of, of building another shed as well. But the price of wood is it's just astronomical how expensive it has got. And will it get more cheaper? I don't know. Um, one place I did find a good a place to find wood from was Reclaim Yard, uh, especially on building beds on the allotment. I got a great deal on a Reclaim Yard that was closing down. And I bought a lot of wood and built a lot of beds on the allotment thanks to that. Uh, not just Green UK, Green Fingers UK blog. One job I did this week was I planted outdoor cucumbers, but as they were small, I popped them under half pot bottles to give a bit of protection as it's cold and wet. Indeed, yes, I think they're going to need that. Um, we've got a picture coming up a little bit later on of some cucumbers that look fantastic. Um, but yes, so I think the sun change in weather. And with the rain, of course, cucumbers are a bit like pumpkins. You get a slight bit of water on the stem, especially when they're young, can lead to stem rot. So um, it's always best to try and protect them as much as I can, um, where uh, I find anyway, certainly. Uh, Stuart says, I always sow seeds, but I do take donations. Is that in reply to somebody? I don't know. Uh, Rebecca, I find it's a good time to sow seeds for winter veg. Absolutely. Yes, I totally agree with that. Uh, so in winter veg, kale, sweet corn, uh, not sweet corn, kale, uh, cabbage, the brassicas, those sort of things. Good idea to sow them now, get them into the ground, get them ready for the winter period, especially as things like after my first early potatoes, for example, they are, we're starting to harvest the first early potatoes, and that's going to leave those beds empty, and that's where I will be planting some of my winter brassicas in. So a good idea to try and use up some of that space uh, by sowing crops now. Uh, Jenny, I don't stop sowing till the end of a season. Sowing peanut plants at the moment. Please do share how you get them with peanut plants. I've always wanted to do that. I've just never got round to doing it. Now, Stuart says FreeCycle is a good place to find bricks or old decking boards. That's a very good idea. Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace is also a good place to look for that sort of thing. Um, FreeCycle is, I haven't used FreeCycle for years, but it just reminded me about it. Idaho, mowed the lawn, fertilised the lawn, sow cucumbers and squash, weed in, weed in, weed in. Obviously, Idaho is in the, uh, America, so uh, in Idaho, obviously. So the weather's a bit better for her to sow those sort of plants. Turbo stream, I sowed a row of Swedes a couple of weeks ago in my seed bed. They are up and growing along nicely. Lovely to hear that. Very lovely to hear that. I always struggle with seeds. I'm going to have to sow some very, very soon. Stuart, sorry, I sown seeds, but people that know I sell, I've started leaving plants for me to sell on my charity. Ah, good idea. Yes, charity table. Excellent. Nice to hear. Aren't people amazing when you hear things, that they do things like that? I, always show, I feel shows the best of what we have out there. Uh, Kate, what would you sow in place of potatoes when harvested? Mine aren't far off, so want to plant ahead, but first time doing this. So that is a very, very good question, actually. Now, I, I'm i looking with my first potatoes. I'm going to be planting in some of my brassicas. So it could be kale, could be cabbages, mainly winter crops, could be cauliflowers, could be leeks. Not necessarily a brassica, but that's a good one to go in there. Um, 
you could, it's a bit late to give Brussels sprouts in, but Brussels sprouts could be an option. But certainly I think if this is your first year, think about cabbages, cauliflower, kale, um, swede, leeks, just to give you five things there that you might want to do. Benny Sleen says, everything I grew from seed and still in the polytunnel got planted out today and got my peppers, etc. potted up on the empty polytunnel benches. Um, excellent. Yes, it's, it's the ideal time now, I think, to start getting our plants out, even if they are still under protection from polytunnels and, and in polytunnels and things. So I'm trying to keep these monitors in my ear, but I keep popping out. Um, Peppers, I've got some of my peppers hardening off now and ready in, in the garden to be potted up and go into various places. Slightly behind, I'm feeling, this year, but I think it's been quite a slow start to this year. Uh, Digwell says, Kate to Kate, uh, asking about the, what to plant after potatoes. Anything that will grow in buckets? Um, so, yeah, that, that's not a bad idea. If you're growing in buckets, potatoes in buckets particularly, then, yeah, anything that does grow in buckets. So, as I said, come back to cabbages, uh, things like that. We have our first caller. Hello, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from? The Oracle. Hello, Oracle. How are you today? I'd just like to start off by saying I'm sorry to hear Stuart Jackson's not well, and it'll be in our thoughts and prayers in the coming weeks. Yes, I'm sure he's uh, on the um, on the mend. Um, he is. Yeah, yeah. I understand the man's under a lot of pressure going in seeds and a lot of seals and all. I think there's ways for him to take it on for him. He gets himself on the mend. Yeah, yeah. He'll be okay in the end. Yes, hopefully he is. Because if these squad's starting to fall apart, Richard, you've made him the south. And now Stuart, who's next? Yeah. You know? But oh. on a brighter note, you see what you say. Do you buy plants and seed, or yeah. do you buy them? Personally, I think if you've got an allotment, you have to go and see that you're cheating. There's nothing better than walking in and seeing your seeds grow, maturing them up, planting them out, and just watching them grow. You don't get no better enjoyment. I think you buy it out of this, the garden shop or whatever. There's no same enjoyment in them because you don't know what, what way they grew them, you know what I mean? Mm. It's like a gardener's touch, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Completely agree. I've likened growing things from seed as being like God in, in some respects, in that you're creating life. You're seeing this life come from a tiny little thing to a full-grown plant. Yeah. It's far better watching it from seed than it would be actually banning on them. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So you're on the side of growing it from seed? Yep. 100% from seed. Or I would pack the eleven them Excellent, excellent. Do you grow That's everything from seed? Everything. The only thing that doesn't grow from seed is a pear tree. I, I, I bought it in, obviously, because you can't grow it from seed. <laughs> but <laughs> anything else in that allotment I have is all from seed. I have to see potato, obviously, because you buy the seed potato. In, but I mean, everything yeah. from seed. Nothing, yeah. nothing will grow unless it's from seed. Everything from seed. Fantastic. Well, that feels like a nice point to kick off that conversation. Personally, now, or people may have other opinions on it, but I think if you're going to buy it out of a garden centre, you're cheating. Yeah. It takes away the fun of an allotment. Yes. Yes, I, I, I know what you're saying. I, I don't think it's necessarily cheating, but I know I what you're know, saying. When people walk by and say, hard you grew up, if, they know the same change. People say, I grew up from seed, and I've done this, I've done that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I always say, um, I'm getting slightly ahead of myself here, but if for the first time gardener, the first year gardening, don't bother growing anything from seed, buy plants. And learn uh, to look after the plant, as opposed to learning how to grow from seed. Well, I tell you, tell you truth, we all started out, we all grew from seed, we killed it, we've done this, we've done that. With yeah. Experience. Yeah. That's the way where you learn, isn't it? Experience, as you say, go get the plant and learn to look after it. Yeah. Thing with seed, isn't it? Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Completely agree. But it was nice having a wee chubby here before it go. It was nice to see you were looking after food there during the week without wee dinner. <laughs> it was a nice dinner as well. For, um, yeah, nice little camp out on Wednesday night that was. Yeah, it's a pity it didn't feed the rest of us. Oh, Are sorry. You? Well, remember for yeah, the next Stuart time. Jackson will, will be in our thoughts and prayers on that. God bless. All the best. You take care.
Go, go bless. I'll see you later, son. Go bless. All the best. All the best. Take care. Maybe. So there we go. That was our first call. That was Oracle firmly on the side of seeds. So that seems like a good point to kick off that conversation. First of all, let's just have a quick look at um, comments that have came in quickly. Nicola has joined. Good evening to you. Rebecca, carrots. I think this is in answer to what can be planted. Excuse me, what can be planted or sown after the potatoes came out. Carrots, that's another very good option. Um, something actually I might do myself. Uh, Turbo Stream. I planted the Supporters Club leeks this week too. My French beans are showing through from a direct sowing a few weeks ago. So there we go. For those that don't know, I run the Supporters Club. Details of that are the vegroundpodcast.co.uk. Um, five pound a month to get a collection of seeds sent straight to your door, a newsletter, and extra behind the scenes podcast. I didn't do one on Thursday. Normally I do them on Thursday and Sunday, but with it being a bank holiday weekend, I think I was asleep by about eight o'clock as well. Um, Belly Cillian, Stuart. Reclaimed bricks are more expensive than new ones over here as they are imperial brick and in big demand for repair work on old houses. So uh, there we go. Uh, the producer has added a link in the comments. Um, if you want to zap yourself in, I should have put up the number as well. Let's pop the number up. If you want to call in like uh, Oracle just did, the number is going across the bottom of the screen. But if you want to appear on the show, click the link that is in the comments and zap yourself in. Uh, uh, what have we got? Got uh, Bally Cillian. The main reason I grow from seed is a bigger selection of varieties. But if something fails, I don't mind buying plug plants. And that, that this is exactly where I want to kick this conversation off. So do you grow from seed or do you buy plants? Let's, let's start that off. And I'll have my own thoughts in just a moment. Rebecca, I grow everything from seed, but sometimes I do find plug plants lifesavers. Like the beginning of the year when I decide to tip my chilies all over the place, I had to buy the plants. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a very, very good point. Something I'm going to come to in just a moment. Anna, I grow most things from seed, but if you have a last minute disaster, plugs can be a lifesaver. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Stuart Jackson, my broad beans are nearly ready to harvest. Hopefully when I feel better, the sweet corn will be ready to replace them. I agree with the first year growing sown seeds and buy a few plants just to help out. Also agree with that. Uh, I don't know, not only the bigger selection, but also simply having the plants at hand. Not very many people over here gardening full. So if you want a full garden, pretty much have to sow them yourself. So I'm going to I'm going to come back to the comments in just a second and I'm going to share everybody my own thoughts. If I was a brand new gardener, my first year into it, I would buy plants from a garden centre, just a few plants. Learn, plant those and learn how to look after those because growing plants and sowing seeds are two different skill sets. Added to that, when you grow things from seed, I feel you need extra equipment that you may not have to hand. So first year gardener, grow get by from plants. But now, I mean, I've been gardening 30 years now. I kind of think I've got a bit of an idea what I'm doing. I tend to sow everything that I can from seeds, chilies, tomatoes, everything like that. And I do that because it's cheaper. You get more plants for your, your um, excuse me, more, more choice of plants for your money. You get more plants for less money. Um, the, the, the choice is bigger. And two, it just feels like you are actually creating these plants. That being said... I'm not adverse to going into a garden centre and buying plants. One, if some seeds don't work for whatever reason. Two, if I happen to be in a garden centre, which was a lot more when we at work, when we had garden centres that we looked after, I would often be in there and just happen to see a certain plant that I didn't know of and compulse buy. I don't do that so much these days. I'm tending to, to just stick with what I've sown. Three, if, if things do fail, they do fail from time to time. The club plants, the potted plants are a backup. 
but I still like to sow seeds. Now, the downside of sowing everything from seed for me is that one, you need a bit more space. I tend to have grow lights and heated propagators, which you don't necessarily have, but they help produce better plants. So you've got to take into those. I start my seeds off in seed compost, so I've got an extra purchase there. I also use some small seeds to start them off and then go into plug plants, some small tr seed trays, that is. And the other downside is I end up with hundreds and hundreds of packets of seeds all over the place. So that is my first thought. So I could probably refine it a bit further, but let's uh, have a look at what everyone is saying out here. Uh, Turbo Stream is saying I was waiting all night for Thursday's podcast too. So, sorry, I literally, I meant to do it, but I think I was out in the sun all day and I just fell asleep about eight o'clock. I wasn't very happy with the wife or pleased with, the, the wife wasn't pleased with me either. Uh, Jenny, I love sowing seeds and they are cheaper. Seeds allow for greater choice of varieties. However, I will buy plugs if my plants have failed, could not get a seed. Whatever works for you. Absolutely fair point. Uh, Kate, it's my first season with an allotment and I had a lot of conflicting advice in groups. Not all positive about when to plant seeds. Got told off for planting too early, so it put me off a bit. I sowed when I thought was right, but some of the seeds failed. Peppers, leeks, aubergines and courgette seeds didn't do great. So I bought plug plants for those. I guess I felt a bit like I had cheated somehow. There's no, no such thing as cheating. I'm going to say that. There's no such thing as cheating. The end result is to grow your own food or grow your own plants. And there's no harm in going in and supporting a garden centre by buying those. Uh, Digwell, I sow seeds and buy plugs, etc. No loyalty to either. So I'm not saying Digwell's on the fence with that, but he's being pragmatic. Um, it's whatever is available. If he can get seeds, he'll sow the seeds, I guess. And if he can buy the plugs, he'll buy the plugs. There's no shame in it. I don't think there's any shame in buying plants at all. Uh, Toby Stream, I sow everything from seed, but not adverse to an emergency purchase if a failure occurred. Again, that's that's my sort of way, my methodology as well. Jenny, I have other over 40 varieties of tomatoes from seed. The choice is not the same in plugs. However, they are demanding. So if you don't want the varieties or the fuss, then plugs make for an easier life. Now, that is actually a very good point. This is something I've had. Somebody contacted me a couple of weeks ago who was after some uh, tomato plants, a variety of tomato plants that were blight resistant. And so I came back and said the varieties that I could think of. And he had a look around the garden centre and couldn't find it because they were selling just your standard, normal, non blight resistant variety tomatoes. The gardeners. Uh, well, what's it? The money maker varieties, the ones that everyone's heard of, the popular ones that sell. Um, now, I did see some crimson crushed tomato plants in another garden centre the other day, but at the same point, it was a bit of a, a struggle to try and find those. The choice is a lot less, whereas seeds, a lot more choice. Not just Green Fingers UK bloggers saying that plants are getting so expensive to buy now, so I grow all mine from seeds. I only buy if I have an accident, i.e. trouble plants or my seeds don't germinate. Even after many, many, many years, I still get a buzz from seeing that my seeds germinate. Now, that is also a very good point. I was shocked. I've been in a few garden centres over this weekend while on call, and I was shocked just how expensive plants have got. Uh, so I think I said on Monday about grow bags as well. I seem to remember grow bags being a pound for a grow bag. And the same with plants. It used to be a pound a plant. Now they're like two, three, four pound a plant and not even for the special ones. It does make you think um, that they are getting a bit, 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 bit expensive. Or is that just our perception? Are we expecting plants to say the same price even though the cost of living and therefore wages are going to go up etc etc um slight slight bit of conflict there internally for me on that but it is a good point uh, um amanda should take you to a jewelers and see what you impulse buy for her <laughs> 
Um, yeah, yeah, we, we can see her coming from that in a minute. Digwell, I will not be growing onions from set again. All five varieties have bolted. Now, that is it, something I was wondering about as well. Um, I've always grown onions from sets. I've always felt that that was the easiest way, quicker for me to plant, quicker for me to get going. I find just growing from seed a little bit fiddly. But that being said, I've had good and much better results from growing onions from seed. So there's a lot more to be said for it. But is growing onions from sets, is that ne not necessarily grown from seed, but is that half of a job done for you? I guess it's a bit like buying plug plants. Um, what, what do you think on that? Is uh, onion sets a bit like buying plug plants? Jenny says the main thing to enjoy is growing and producing food. Plugs are still homegrown veg. No shame. Just enjoy it and be proud of yourself. I totally agree with that. I think that's something I'm underlining everything with is that there's no right or wrong way. This is just what do you prefer and why? Uh, Chili Kate, sorry for being late. Got back from a long weekend camper today and just been to check on a very wet allotment. I bet you were glad for the rain if you were away. I was a bit worried that it was going to be a little bit too dry. Uh, Rebecca says, I don't like it when other gardeners tell people off. Neither do I. I'm, I'm with you there. Do whatever you wish in your own plots. Sow seeds early or late. Make mistakes. Um, and she goes, I'm just going to part. It's how we all learn. Now, that I totally agree with. I think it was... Um, I, I, I try with the Veg Grow podcast group and the forum. The forum doesn't really get used that much, except for spam. Uh, but I try and always instill that there's no right and wrong way of doing things. If people want to sow things early, let them, and they can learn from it. So it's all about experience. And who knows, it might suddenly work in their favour and prove that things can be sown a little bit earlier and you can be successful. There's no right or wrong way, is what I'm saying. Um, the producer says, just completing the to-do list is enough. Uh, to Ian, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we won't worry too much about that. Uh, Ian says, don't forget to click the like button. Yes, I was just going to say that, actually. If you're enjoying this podcast, this not this podcast, if you're enjoying this live stream, uh, please do give us a thumbs up, a like, and all of that jazz. Don't forget to click the bell notification to know we're going live. And uh, don't forget to subscribe or follow, depending on what you are uh, watching us on. Toby Stream, I sowed my seed seeds in a seed bed on the plot. No seed sowing compost, no plastic pots to dry out, so you don't need anything special to start sowing seeds. That is a very good point. That is a very, very good point. Um, you don't necessarily need anything special. Well, I do like to have my special things, but a seed bed on the plot means you can sow seeds without needing plastic pots, without needing sowing compost. Um, etc etc the things that i tend to use good point there turbo stream thank you idaho i don't have a problem buying transplants if i have to last year's gophers tore up my homegrown cucumber plants so i went to a garden center and bought their transplants no big deal indeed um and that's what that is my sort of theory as well if, if seeds do fail or something destroy your plants the garden center there is there as a backup uh, Randy Keller Sagona, apologies if I've pronounced your name wrong, but uh, I do my best. Greetings from Southern USA. Love the podcast. Suggestions for your favorite green manure for when my potatoes come out. My favorite green manure has got to be Facilia, um, which I, I, it's my favorite because it suppresses the weeds so well. But if after your potatoes come out, if you're talking about your first potatoes or or whatever if your first potatoes there's still time to get more crops be it cabbages or whatever if it's your main crops then you're probably going to be looking at something like field beans so that they add more nitrogen into the soil to to recover from the potatoes potatoes are quite hungry plants so yeah um field beans are a good one to look for for green manures 
It's something that I'm going to be uh, dabbling with over this winter, certainly green, uh, field beans. Stuart Jackson, when I was looking at prices at the beginning of the season, I noticed that all veg plants were more than 50% more than last year. Tomatoes, £1.50. Last year, they were pounds. Was price. This is a, a very good point because I've seen on. Oh, there we go, I'm back. Um, Stuart made a very good point. Sorry, I don't know what's happening. The, we got a thunderstorm warning, I think that's causing issues with the signal. But Stuart makes a good point. I've noticed a few places that sell plants outside their houses. I haven't been to a car boot to see what they're selling down there, but the prices I feel, even in those places, have gone up as well to reflect what has happened in the garden centres. Um, it's almost, I feel, with garden centres, the price of the plants are almost making it too expensive. This is something that's coming up on the podcast tomorrow, but it's almost making it too expensive to grow your own because two, three, four pound for a tomato plant when you can buy a huge, a, a, a nice packet of tomatoes from a supermarket for under a pound, Ain't going to work that way unless you grow it from seed. Um, dig well. An onion is a biannual plant. I said is a plant being lifted after one season of growth. So I guess it's a plant having a rest a bit like the bare rooted fruit bush. I didn't think it was one season of plant growth. I thought they just started it off and then for a few couple of months. Um, but yeah. Um, it is a it is a bit like a bare rooted fruit bush. I agree with that. It's it's like ripping it out of the ground and just freezing it in stasis until it's ready to go back in. Um, yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah, yeah. Another reason I like growing from seeds is it gets me into garden in December, January, February, and March instead of waiting until plant plants are sold in garden centres. Well, again, I find that if I look in garden centres around January, February time, the plug plants do start to arrive. And I always feel then I'm a little bit behind. I've, it, it almost panics me. But then you've got to remember that they are being forced to grow. That's what I remind myself. They're being forced to grow into a garden centre, get them into the shops um, early so that they are there to sell. And of course, as they grow bigger and bigger, the, the garden centre could always pot them up and sell them for even more money so that they don't get wasted. Uh, Jenny, I do wish some companies would stop sending plugs in plastic packaging as it's hard to reuse it. Some companies are sending in cardboard and paper now, which is good. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I try to reuse plastic as much as possible in, in any single way. And it, it's becoming very very difficult to do um the cardboard ones i've even brought, seen some garden centers actually selling plants in root blocks which are just compressed a, a square compressed piece of soil that the seed is planted into and they're just grown like that or started off like that and seen them sell like that was reducing packaging even more good idea but it's difficult to You've got to weigh things up with the, the transportation. So if I order plants from an online garden centre, for example, when they arrive to me, I want to make sure that that packaging, or the garden centre certainly does, that packaging is going to protect the plants during transit as well. Plastic, unfortunately, is still a very, very good uh, material for transporting things, provided it's recycled correctly and is continually recycled. I think that's the important thing. It's not so much the material itself, it's how it's disposed of and recycled. Toby Stream, I brought field beans to try this winter too. Indeed, another one for field beans. I'm looking forward to trying those. Nicola, I like to go the seed route, but we'll sometimes buy from a garden centre, normally in discount corner. <laughs> yeah, I'm always in discount corner as well. I use plastic trays from kitchen purchases. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, good point. Yeah, plastic trays. You can use a huge amount of different things for that. Excuse me, I'm going to cough again, I think. Excuse me. Um, car boot 50p tomato plants. I haven't been to a car boot this year to see how much they are, but the ones I'm seeing outside houses are looking a little bit 
and pricey. Uh, Beatrice has made, said that's a good point to Jenny about the use of plastic in from transportation. I haven't seen any used cardboard or paper. I have seen garden centres selling their plug plants in almost like a cardboard container, which I think is great. But the transportation is, is where it get, falls down. Do you think plugs and garden centre plants have gone up because of energy cost increases? Definitely energy cost increases, fuel cost increases for transportation as well. It's where a nursery might come into a, a, its own where there's low transportation. Um, eh, unfortunately, price of fuel affects everything because we all use fuel uh, in, in one form or another. It, it, you know, we've all got to go to work or heat our homes or use electricity, which means that all has to be paid for and that all costs money. So, yes, energy cost increases has caused a lot of this price increase. Uh, it's not the price, it's the enjoyment for me and Millard. Millard, am I pronouncing that correctly? I hope so. I agree. I do agree. It's not so much about the price and the enjoyment, but at the same point, like anything we do, you've got to make sure it is affordable. There's no good trying to waste money doing something that you love if you cannot afford it, because that defeats the entire point. Shush. Sorry. Ian Beddows, don't forget to factor in the taste of homegrown. Worth a bit more than supermarket prices. I agree with that. Yep. The, the price does, uh, the taste of homegrown is a price you cannot buy. Uh, also, there's no transport costs, so it, it, or very low transport costs. So you're doing a, a lot better for the green side of things as well. I have explained to Marshalls and Primrose, use cardboard and shredded paper. Um, that's that's good to know as well. Bunny Slim, I agree. Seen people buying sweet pea plants in a shop at the same time I was sowing my seeds. Where they were going to plant them, I don't know weather-wise. Um, yeah, I think that that is a very, very valid point. Um, yeah, I, I said earlier about seeing plug plants out around January, February, which always makes me feel I'm a little bit too late, but then I just got to remember that those plug plants have been forced on under ideal growing conditions to get them out in the shops early. I can do the same with my grow lights and my heated propagators. Chitty Gate, I've grown extra at everything and will swap extras at our village Facebook plant swap group for the plants that I didn't sow. It's been a great resource. That's a good idea, actually. That is also a good point that is something that I, I, I'm discussing in tomorrow's podcast. Uh, the use of being able to swap plants around as a way of getting free plants as well. And so it, it sometimes by growing from seed and having more than what you actually need pays off in that regard as well. So, yes, yes, that is another thing that goes on the side of seed sowing. Get extra that you can swap around. Um, and peat-free compost. I think that's talking about... Uh, peat free compost coming in cardboard and shredded paper. This is um, and it's something I've, I've, I've always said for a while actually that the compost coming in plastic bags seems a little bit counterproductive. I'd like to go to a garden centre and take a bucket that I can just fill up and buy by the bucket load if you like. Uh, Jenny, I wondered about price increases, and I was reading there is going to be a cucumber shortage in UK growing cucumbers due to the cost of heating and lighting the huge greenhouses. Growers said no. I do think there's going to be a big factor into it. I've got to say there is ways that we could heat our greenhouses and um, what have you for less money by using... I don't know, hotbeds, for example, and composting in our greenhouse. But on an industrial scale, I do think that they are, there may not be a shortage, but the price increases are going to be caused by the extra price increases in the fuel. Uh, Jenny says, Digwell, yes, I think you are right. Well, I, I've caught up on the comments now. Now, I have been sent a lovely video from Kate. Um, 
and it's funny enough ties in with what we're talking about composting so i want to show this now and we'll come back and continue this conversation okay so this is my worm composter i got it for christmas because i'm rock and roll like that as you can see here this has got the hessian on the top and here are the little guys and we just keep adding food to them and this this is one of you have got to be careful what you put in there um the potatoes do actually kind of grow so they end up pushing everything up but as you can see it's turning into nice dark soil there's different layers on it so this is the bottom layer here where there's like a filtration system you can see that there you see the roots growing through and that's what i mean about being careful what you actually put in they don't like anything like citrus or onions or anything like that um but these little guys have been working their socks off since i got this and um it's just really enjoyable to have so you, know, you always wear gloves when you're handling this because you know bacteria and whatnot but yeah this is my wormery and each time they fills one i then add another one on top and i've just harvested one load of compost and i'm going to keep going with it um honestly it's fantastic i've loved every minute of having this um been some interesting trials and tribulations along the way um you can get flies sometimes but you just have to be careful about the moisture levels but as you can see here that is absolutely beautiful stuff that's coming through there and all for the cost of the setup and then just the uh, scraps from the kitchen so anyway that's it bye for now bye then so here i am doing some of the worm compost from my wormery i've just taken it out and as you can see there's still some bits left in there but that is absolutely beautiful soil I made the mistake of including potato peelings, which I won't do again. But look at that. That is absolutely fantastic. I've loved having my wormery. And now I'm just going through to make sure that none of these little guys have managed to get in there. Um, and then I'm going to plant this up with lettuce. But as you can see, that is absolutely beautiful stuff. So nice to use all the stuff from the kitchen and also to uh, know where my compost has come from. As you can see, one of the little guys here is uh, made his way out, but I'm going to pop him back in and they can carry on doing their thing. Bye for now. What a great video. I've got a bit, I'm a big fan of wormeries. I've got two now. Uh, one of my underground is Subpod, which is a great piece of kit. Uh, my wormery well, a bit similar to that that we stack trays on more importantly i've actually trained amanda to start using it as well in that she uh or or should i say when i forget to empty the the, the pail that we keep in our kitchen which is most days she now takes it out to our wormeries and, and feeds the worms as we like to call it um I'm a big fan of wormeries, a really big fan. I think they are the number one thing to have in any garden because they do take your waste and you don't have to throw as much in the bin. So, yeah. Um, so Digwell said to me, I was saying that peat-free compost put the price up of plants in garden centres. That's a good point as well, actually. Yes, with the peat-free uh, being more more expensive compost that has probably had a knock-on effect to the the garden pricing in garden centers as well so yeah i do agree with that and i'm a i'm a big uh sort of fan of of using peat free although the quality needs to up its game by far when you buy a cabbage plug plant it looks and is a baby cabbage, but it's just amazing to plant a seed. I can hardly see and watch it grow to an amazing plant. So, yeah, belly silly. Yeah, it is amazing to see it grow from a seed. I, I likened it to being a feeling like your God in that you've taken this tiny little seed, you've planted it, and it, it's become a huge tomato plant or something, which has then gone on to grow more seeds that you can use the following year and so on and so on. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. 
If you smoke, it's £11 a day, £77 a week wasted there. There is no way you should spend no more than £20 a week on your plot. So wasting £20 is the best option. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how people can afford to smoke anymore as it is. Uh, £11 a pack here, is it now? Blimey, blimey. Um, but what, what I mean is that there are people who are, will struggle to find £20 a week now unfortunately, with a cost of living crisis. And, and £20 may not be a lot of money to most of us, but there's some that's going to be a lot of money and might struggle to find. So anything they can do cheaper is always going to be a good thing. UK supermarkets set to import cucumbers. It seems silly to force growers in the UK supply chains not be able to grow and force imports. Bad for the planet and the quality is not as nice. I agree. I think we should be trying to encourage the UK supermarkets to buy uk food the trouble is a lot of people out there they expect strawberries in the middle of december when they're not usually available and because of that supermarkets have to provide if the demand's there they're going to provide it if we don't demand that food at that time it's not going to be sold in the supermarkets it's all about supply and demand and that's the number one thing it comes to with supermarkets you've got to got to provide the demand for them to do anything um I can sit here and, and preach about that till the end of time and it won't change anything because, unfortunately, not everybody is aware that seasons affect the food that we can have. Uh, not just Green UK, Green Fingers UK vlog. Well, I'm sold on the worry. Which ones are the best to buy? Um, there's a lot of different ones out there. I got mine from Amazon. I've had it for about seven years. I, I can't remember what it what it's made by but it's just a standard black one um the sub pod is a really good one if you're looking for something that is a bit more discreet because it's underground it doubles up as a seat um and that's sub pod which i will type out now in the comments if you want to see it um it's a really good one the sub pod one that i really like um basically other worries it's all about there's some like at least um kate's one in that video which looks really nice and smart i think that can be a deciding factor if you want something that really looks the part uh, i liquidize my kitchen waste for the wormery yeah i think i do believe that worms particularly like everything being chopped up nice and small and it makes it easier for them to digest we don't tend to do that we just throw it in there and see what happens and we throw everything onion peelings onions potato skins everything that it says that we shouldn't we put in there just to make the most of it um i, I don't know if anybody else out there has a wormery and is in as much love with the wormery as i am but i highly highly recommend getting a wormery and i think they can fit in in any garden no matter where you are as well um what what else have we got so it, it, i'm getting the impression that everybody here tonight is coming down to my same sort of logic in that we want to sow all our plants from seed as best as we can but we use the plug plants the garden centers as a backup if we need to uh, that is definitely my stance definitely my my feelings on it there is what sorry i'm just trying to sort my ears out as well there is and it's just popped out again but there is one plant that i have never grown from seed i don't think it's possible to grow from seed and that is the sweet potato plants when i've grown sweet potatoes I haven't done that for a while actually something i need to look at doing again uh, the reason being that it, you can grow you can get slips from seed potatoes from a supermarket but but they, i've tried and i've not had much luck doing it instead i've i've bought slips from a online garden center they've been sent to my house i've potted them on planted them out and they have been um, fantastic in fact i produced last year and that's why i've really got to start thinking about getting the sweet potatoes again um but they are the only one that I've never grown from seed. I don't think I've even ever seen seeds from them. 
I, that I can think of. Don't think I've ever seen seeds for sale for sweet potatoes. Only the slips. Um, what other other things are uh, when it comes to seeds? I, strawberries as well. I have grown some strawberries from seed, but they're very, very tricky. Very tricky. Sorry, I shouldn't dip on my phone on silence. Very tr tricky to grow from seed. One, because the seeds are so small and they're very difficult to, to try and sow thinly. But two, the actual plants themselves, they, they produce runners when they are growing. So there seems very little need to grow from seed. Also, barb I've grown from seed. I think that there's going to be a few seeds or a few plants out there that nobody has grown from seed. And what are they? Kate says, I got my wormy from Wiggly Wigglers. Put some shredded paper in to help with the moisture balance. Also, some crushed egg helps their digestion. I stayed in the kitchen over winter and no smell whatsoever. I leave ours outside uh, all year round and it does fine from that. Um, but we don't, we only get smell when the liquid feed builds up too much and it doesn't drain away that's something i've got to try and keep on top of especially this time of year when it's producing a lot of the liquid feed uh katie john rambo mcdonald says grow from seed cheaper and more satisfying i agree it is cheaper and more much more satisfying uh, but are there examples where you uh welcome to the show by the way are there examples when you don't grow anything from seed uh, and do you grow everything from seed? Uh, Jenny says, I have 12 sweet potato plants at the mo. They were plugs. £6 for 12. That's good. That's very good, actually. I couldn't resist. They've, they have to be gone from grown from slips, but you can make your own slips. I've tried to make my own slips. I wasn't very successful, so I gave up. Um, I might try again. I might try again one day, but... Um, I've not seen them as seeds. I've not seen any seeds at all for sweet potato plants. There we go. Anna, alpine strawberries are delicious and very easy to grow from seed, self seed everywhere. Yes, alpine strawberries, though tiny, tiny little strawberries that are just full of a lot of flavour. Uh, we used to have them just growing naturally in our garden, but they've slowly disappeared since getting the chickens. It might be something we can do again, these alpine strawberries. And, and yes, they do sell seed everywhere. And they even grow in the wild. So definitely one. Um, but have you managed to grow them from seed? Have you managed to grow them from seed, Anna? Uh, Chili Kate, I have two pallet colour beds of strawberries. One was one that's from the swap group and the others contain plants that I liberated from a plot and the paths around. That's what I mean. It's very, very easy to grow strawberry plants from runners as opposed to seeds I, I find anyway and because we get so many runners and so many other plants um it, it uh, seems like a, a much easier way of getting extra strawberry plants in fact what i'm i've been doing in recent years with my strawberry runners is i've been potting them up into hanging baskets and these hanging baskets then can go into the greenhouse for early plants and then they move outside and that's something I'm going to be doing a lot more of, trying to build up how many hanging baskets I get just for strawberries. Turbo Stream says, oh, uh, I think saving your own seed, then sowing and growing next year's produce is very satisfying. If you direct sow, then it's essentially free food. That's a very good point. We've, I think we've discussed saving seed before, and it's something I've dabbled with. It's... It's not as easy as it sounds, but I think if we're trying to be self-sufficient, then trying to save our own seed is definitely something that we have to do. If you are um, if you are looking or want to zap yourself in and appear on screen, the link is in the comments, as you will probably see. Unless you're watching in the Facebook group, I'm afraid. The Facebook group does work a bit differently due to Facebook rules. Uh, Jenny Hallett says, I grow alpine strawberries as a companion plant. Feed the birds, great for ground cover, 
for frogs and bees love the flowers. There's a lot of lot to be said for alpine strawberries, a lot to be said, and even natural strawberries. I used to underplant some of my fruit trees with those as well, just to make use of that space, grow some extra food, and it acted as a mulch, suppressed weeds, except for cooch grass, um, and provided us with some extra food. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's the good thing with our runners, where they do tend to take over a bit. Talking about sweet potatoes from Anis, uh, I watch a guy on YouTube called Sean Get James, my self-reliance. Uh, he has just planted sweet potato slips in his huge greenhouse. The beds are that method of Wattingwood, Hugel culture. I can't think of a name. It's Hugel culture. He lives out in the Canadian wilderness. I've not seen him. I will check him out. Sean James, my self-reliance. At first, I think you're talking about somebody else there. Um, yeah, Hugel culture. Hugel culture. That's something I'm experimenting with this year on one of my plots, or one of my beds on the allotment. Um, it just, I'm wondering how that is going to work out with growing sweet potatoes in slips in a in a greenhouse in, in, with Hugel culture. That does make you think, doesn't it? Is it, it going to work? I'm guessing if those are... <laughs> The idea behind Hugel culture, I don't know, don't want to, um, I don't know if anybody else has heard of Hugel culture. You've probably heard me talk about it on the podcast because it's something I've experimented with this year. The idea is that you pop some wooden or uh, wooden trunks, like tree trunks, in the bottom of a bed and you cover that over with compost and you plant into that compost. And the, the wood acts as it rots down, it acts as like a sponge, so it holds onto water and provides a, a source of water for the plants growing in the compost, but it also acts as a way of holding on to other nutrients and things as well. That's the idea. A lot of people swear by it. I've never done it before myself, but it's something I'm trying this year. It's too early for me to call any results. Um, I've only got the bed finally finished just last year. More importantly, what I found is a great way to use up some of the waste materials, these wooden blocks that I had lying around and just needed some sort of use. So, uh, yeah, I'm pleased to say uh, that uh, Hugel culture is a quite an interesting way of gardening. Um, right, let's have a quick look at some of the photos that have come in to us here at the Veggie Grow Podcast this week. So first of all, for the SPB, I mentioned that uh, we've had some cucumbers sent in on, on pictures. And this is a, a coming from Philly. And he's grown these cucumbers in wicked beds, as you can see underneath, which has meant that the cucumbers has stayed very, very moist all the time. And it looks to be paying off because those cucumbers look very, very healthy and off to a really good start. Uh, David Williams has this infestation on his apple tree. This is in a Facebook group. So if anybody can help him, then please do go and have a look. Um, let me just change the, uh, the, the image set up so you can get a closer look. There's a load of caterpillars with this sort of cobweb material around it. I suggest just scooping them off and feeding them to the chickens. But... They are apparently eating the leaves, and it apparently can cause uh, there to be no apples. So not sure what these caterpillars are, but there was a lot of discussion about it in the Facebook group. Nicola shared these this photo of her blue potatoes, which look absolutely stunning on her. More violet, actually. Now, I've grown blue potatoes before. A bit of a novelty, I found, because once you cooked them, they seem to turn white. But what happened there? Nicola seemed to find a, a different way of doing them by cooking them in an egg steamer. I guess any steam, uh, a steamer would work as well. Um, and she just steamed them in her egg steamer and they stayed blue all the way through. That does sound like a good idea to me. Certainly something I'll be looking at doing again in the future. Uh, Erica has found that she's had a similar problem to me with the compost that we're doing the experiment on down on the allotment. The potatoes that are grown in the Wix's uh, compost are massively behind, massively behind. They've only just started to show themselves in the last couple of weeks, whereas all the others 
were growing weeks away, weeks ago. A week's compost seems to be very far down the list of a good compost. Uh, Kate has been wondering what is wrong with our cucumbers as the leaves seem to be just turning yellow around the edges. Again, this is in the Facebook group. A lot of people have added their own opinions. We've had lots of different answers, uh, lots of different things to try and see what happens. Um, I, I, I suggested adding a bit of feed that might perk them up. I think it was Digro who said it might be a lack of water or too much water. Uh, somebody else suggested Epsom salts. Huge number of things that it could be. Um, anybody else has any ideas, then please do share your thoughts on that as well in the Facebook group. Uh, Anis is very excited to see the first flower on her aubergine plants. Um, what great looking plants, I've got to say. Those aubergine plants look incredibly healthy and like they're really doing well. So well done to you there. Uh, Stuart, he mentioned, I think it was last week, that his school is growing plants for shows in shopping trolleys and baskets. And here we have them. I can see, oh, I can imagine they're quite difficult to keep hold of water. But I think the novelty factor has made it really quite interesting. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing your photos and please do keep sharing them. You can send them to me directly, Richard, at adventuregrowpodcast.co.uk via social media, Facebook, Instagram, etc, etc. Um, if you've got a video, the best way to send me a video is via wetransfer.com as well. Again, my email address, richard at adventuregrowpodcast.co.uk Um Jenny says, I'm growing sweet potatoes in three different ways to see which is the most effective way. I'm looking for the easiest way to manage and the best harvest and weigh up which is best for me. So I'm going to add my experience about growing sweet potatoes. What I found with sweet potatoes, they need a lot of moisture and a lot of warmth. And what you want to try and do is also try and um, reduce the amount of stems coming from the plant to just one. Uh, that seemed to produce better. And also, what um, who was it? Bob Flower Juice suggested it's actually growing them in black buckets um, so that's, that are still on a bed and still hold on to moisture. But the black just helps warm them up, warm the soil up nicely, and they seem to grow really well as, through that way. Again, I should get some to try and experiment with different ideas and see what does the best. What I found, a bed full of plenty of organic matter, lots of hot, well rotted horse manure did the best. So, Jenny, please do let us know how you get on. And it's lovely cucumber plants. Mine did not look like them. They were, uh, uh, this was Phillies at the beginning, they did look like fantastic cucumber plants. I think that wicking system has really worked well uh, at keeping those low roots full of moisture. Uh, Anna, Jen, Anna Jones says, great photos, everyone. Love the potatoes. Those potatoes look beautiful, didn't they? Those blue potatoes that just look absolutely delicious and crumble away lovely. Uh, Jenny, also sweet potato foliage is said to pot off pests. They don't like it. I believe that sweet potato foliage is also edible. You can use it a bit like spinach. I've never eaten it myself, but uh, definitely something to think about if you are looking to grow your own food as a, a second source of of uh, or getting two harvests from one crop just picking a few leaves and eating them okay so do we do we have a consensus on the growing from seed slash buying plants in i think it's safe to say there is no right or wrong way i think we, we always try and be very very clear that everyone has their own uh, ideas and there is no right or wrong way uh, everyone seems to prefer growing from seed because it's easier and oh, oh, sorry there's more choice there's more enjoyment um, but grow, buying plants is a fallback option that is always good to have in your back pocket in case it is needed um, I think that is the consensus it's, if anyone has anything else to add to it <laughs> and as I said earlier the final question that I have for this question is uh, what, what plants do you never grow from seed and why? 
Um, Nicholas says that those blues potatoes, they tasted good too. I didn't take the plants out, just had to dig around in the planter, left it to swell the remaining tubers. Um, there's quite a few blue or violet potatoes out there these days, so there's a good choice. Um, I just I love the look of those. I find when I've cooked blue potatoes in the past, they, the blue and the white, or the white, the blue has been lost in the cooking process, so steaming them does look like a good idea. Uh, Bellison says, Richard, have you ever grown potato toms? My brother gave me one plant. The tomato plant is grown strong with plenty of flowers. Have to wait till it dies back to see how many potatoes are produced on the roots. So, yes, is my answer to this. I am currently doing it this year in one of the, uh, it's, in, it's either in a patio or a balcony garden. I think it's a balcony garden. Um, or was it in both? I can't remember off the top of my head. But yes, I think they're about £12 a plant. So I feel they are quite expensive. Uh, but uh, I feel if you are short on space, they might be an option. A lot of people, I think... Uh, Digwell has said when we've mentioned this before that you don't get many potatoes but this is what I want to find out for ourselves if you're short on space it might be just another option and we'll see what happens in the end what I would like to know and this is by buying these potato tom plants is that what we don't know is what the actual varieties of the potatoes or the tomatoes are so if they are i don't know maris piper on the bottom and crimson crush on the top fantastic they're, they're potatoes and they're tomatoes that i would be growing anyway but if they're say money making tomatoes and i don't know charlotte potatoes then the charlotte potatoes need to be out a bit earlier than the tomatoes finished so i'm hoping that they are main crops of potatoes and decent tomatoes um lots of questions that are going on in my head that i would like to know more about when it comes to these potato toms or tom tatoes as they're also called uh turbo stream can you sow raspberries from seed or red currants etc that's one plant that is usually bought it that usually bought in grown from cuttings so it is possible. I know it is possible to grow raspberries from seed. And in fact, that's quite often how they tend to sell seed. A bird will eat the raspberry and then poop out the seeds uh, somewhere else. Uh, as same as red currants. But you very rarely, I don't think I've ever seen raspberry or red currant seeds for sale. Most people will take cuttings or layer the, the plants to get hold of more plants. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll take cuttings. So why would you grow them from seeds when they're tiny little seeds? They take a long time to really produce anything. Um, lots and lots of questions, lots and lots of options there. Um, I don't know if anybody has grown them from seed. I tried growing an apple tree from seed once. It, oh, actually, let me rephrase that. I've tried growing apples, lemons, oranges, kiwi from seeds before and what i found is the apple were very difficult to get germinate they need a period of stratification where they're basically at a cold temperature for a month or two so outside over winter was an easy way around that but they took about five years and the same with the lemon and the oranges they took about five maybe even ten years before they produced anything so they were a long time before they actually got anything for for your effort so in that case i don't think it's worth growing them from seed however there might be people that disagree with me on that uh hi rich sorry i missed the delayed start i don't know what happened there i think we were okay um, but no worries dig well my tomato home grafted had loads of tomatoes but only one spud i thought there was somebody who uh I thought it was you who had, had done that before. But yes, the home grafted. I think you did it yourself. This is something my granddad spoke that they did during the war when they ran the nursery. They took potatoes and tomatoes and, and grafted them together. That would be the cheaper way to do it and something I might look at doing in the future if I find the tomatoes to be a bit successful. Bunny Sillian says, my brother got them on discount shelf, reduced £3, just growing for the fun of it. Well, £3 makes them a bit more... Uh, realistic to try and grow 
like I say, I would like to know what plants are actually on them. Uh, Stuart says, I did sow lettuce in my veggie pod last week and they are already showing. I don't intend to buy any veg plants this year unless I have a failure. Most probably it will be cucumber as I've lost plants the last two years. Now, that's an interesting, interesting point that why did you have a failure with cucumbers? Was it stem rot like I suspect most people suffer with? Uh, anyway. Uh, got one apple tree growing that the grand sand planted from seed seems to grow an inch a month. Well, wow, that's impressive, Ian. So you have grown an apple tree from seed, but it, and it's growing. But is it producing? Is it producing any apples yet? I'm saying not yet, but you know what I mean. YouTube said you was live in 58 minutes at 6 p.m. I don't know what happened there, Adrian. I think I was definitely live at 6 p.m. and I, I don't know what happened. YouTube playing funny games, I suspect. Uh, Jenny says, I think currants, etc., need to be removed from the jelly layer within the fruit and then left to dry before sowing. But I could be wrong. I've read somewhere that you need to copy what happens in nature. Yes, that is possibly true. Like I said, I've never grown currants from seed, but I know many seeds need stratification, which is the process of going through a winter, i.e. they need to be chilled. Or scarification, where it replicates going through a, um, a digestive system, so they get some scratches in the in the seed in order for them to germinate. Um, again, this is something that that, that that makes you think: Is it going to be worth doing that with something like apples or currants, when you could take a cut and, and get some earlier plants? Stuart stem rot. Hopefully, I will remember to water at the bottom this year. Yeah, it's very tricky with with a lot of the cucumber family. The, the if I pronounce it right, the the uh, pumpkins and the the cucumbers and so on to water from the bottom because they do suffer from stem rot quite easily. Where especially when it rains, like it has done, and that water just lands on that stem and then rots the the, the root and kills the entire plant off. Always, always annoying. Um, Adrian says, sorry, I missed the price of program. Blame YouTube. No worries, mate. No worries. Uh, hope you are well and hope your wife is well as well, by the way. Meant to be asking about that. Yeah, so that is my thoughts on, 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 on grown uh, apple trees and currants from seed is that it's very, very tricky to do. Um, and it's always not worth, worth doing it. One of my preferred ways of of getting extra plants is a method called layering which happens a lot in nature particularly with something like blackberries where blackberries where the stem of the uh the plant gets in contact with the ground and it roots itself now what i like to do if i do this with gooseberries a really successful way actually gooseberries blackberries currants what I like to do is take a branch and feed it through the bottom of a plastic flower pot. Then I try and support that flower pot so it's in the, uh, it's not going to cause any weight to the, uh, the branch. Fill that flower pot up with compost and then leave it for a few months and it will eventually root. And then I just cut it away from the main plant. And there you go, another plant with roots already on it in a pot. For me... It's called layering. It's the easiest way that I've found to grow extra plants like that, uh, especially compared to seeds. Not just Green Fingers UK blogger. I put pots next to my cucumbers in the greenhouse and water into them to avoid stem rot. Yep, I do exactly the same. But uh, I'm I'm looking, especially after seeing um, Philly's photos, I'm thinking that the wicking systems will work really really well um adrian says that it was counted down 30 minutes then one minute then said live in 50 i don't know what happened there adrian i really don't um and jenny says i've never suffered stem rot but i am growing in beds for the first time this year would loosely scattered straw help egg dry the store and stem easily good question that one good question i I would recommend using a mulch anyway, and straw can be used as a mulch. 
uh, to, to reduce the amount of water it needed, of course, and straw can be pretty cheap to buy. Whether it would dry out or cause stem rot more, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm always cautious when I do add a mulch to not try and get too close to the base of plants. I try and pull it away from there where I can. Um, we'll throw that one out to everyone out there. Has anyone used straw around the excuse me, sorry, a straw around the base of cucumbers and has it helped with stem rot? Although Jenny has never suffered from it, so how would you how would you judge that? I was very lucky not to have suffered from stem rot. It seems to be a constant problem here. And only when it rains. Not something I do, but when it rains and that water just lands on that stem. This is what happened to my pumpkin plants last week. Or one of my pumpkin plants, it suffered from stem rot and, and killed it off. And I've had to replant another one this week. Luckily, I've got lots and lots of pumpkin plants that are are going into various places. Lots of pumpkins, a lot of squash plants, a lot of courgettes, all of which I'm really excited and, and, and looking forward to being able to munch and eat on. I don't know if anybody else is is feeling the same way because you know what? It's a great time, of, great hobby this growing your own food. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. And the best thing is you get food out at the end of it. And everyone knows I like my food, which is why I've got such a big belly. Now, uh, next week, the subject that I'm thinking of discussing next week is going to be um, how do you store your crops? This is one I think we're, we're moving into that time of year where we're going to start harvesting things. And more and more of our crops are going to need storage. And I always think it's best to be prepared rather than wait till the last minute. So I thought next year, next week, we can discuss our various ways of storing our crops. I've got quite a few different methods, all of which I'm a big fan of. Um, but let me know yours as well next week. And don't forget, send in your photos, send in your videos, and send in various things like that. Don't have to be about the subject. Anything related to veg gardening or gardening in general is acceptable if you want to send anything in. Uh, Digwell says, outdoor or ridge cucumbers are more resilient to stem rot than greenhouse types. They have to be in the UK summers. Never had an issue personally. Well, you've been very lucky then, very lucky. Like I say, I get it when it rains. Uh, and even that's outside. Uh, Jenny, do you think as I grow so much in pots together that they suck up the rain and the different plants' foliage protect the stems? You could, It could be that. It's also possibly because it's raised up slightly, you're getting more airflow across it, which is drying out the, 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 um, the, the water as well. So it could be, could be that is why you're not getting many problems. Interesting to find out. Uh, Andrew says, we prepare food for winter largely in jars. They're called Zimnis here. That's fantastic. We'll find out more about that next week. I'd love to love to find out more about, about that and uh, how you do it. Uh, like I say, that, that's the subject next week, storing food. I think it was one that was requested a while ago um, that I made a note of. We've got lots and lots of options coming in. On to... The, that the week after that it's gardeners world live who's going to gardeners world live and what days are you going um I, i'm i'm trying to figure out the best day to go it won't be the sunday i know that much because i've got to do the live show um probably be the thursday and the friday I, i'm going to go for two days potentially um just love to know what days everyone is going Stuart, that's a great subject for next week so i'm going to have lots of broad beans and onions well We've got lots of discussions on that. Very Lots of ideas that I've got on that as well. Uh, how would you keep the whole cucumber vine dry outdoors? This is exactly this is exactly my point, is that I always lose cucumbers or pumpkins when it rains because of that stem rot. And I know it's stem rot because I can see it happening. I think the bigger the plant, the older the plant, the stronger it generally is. And that's uh, why it is more successful. Um, well, that, that's where it can it can be a lot more successful. Um, starting to rain. I'm just hearing talking of rain. I can hear the rain coming in now. Um, 
Yeah, but I did wonder when I planted out a pumpkin plant today, I did wonder about pulling up a little sort of like umbrella out there to try and protect it just while it got established and grown on a bit. So um, it's just, just little ideas. Digwell says, Thursday for me, that's Gardner's World. Okay, excellent. And Kate says, I'm going to the Friday to the Gardner's World. Can't wait. Be great to say hi to anyone else that's there that day. Uh, Turbo Stream, I fancy Gardner's World Live. We could have a mini bit. Just need a day. I can go any day. Um, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. I probably am going to go on the Thursday and the Friday, in all honesty, providing Amanda uh, doesn't have any plans. Um, I'd like to go on the weekend, but Saturdays are normally so so busy, I can't really record much. So I'm thinking possibly the Thursday and the Friday, depending on on what the the wife says, of course. Not that she she has a problem with it, you know. It's always just polite to be give her a bit of a, a heads up. Right. We're coming to the end of the show. If you've enjoyed this, please do give us a thumbs up. Please do give us a like. Please do follow, subscribe, and all that thing. I know I've already said that. Um, thank you so much to Kate for her video. Thank you so much to everybody that sent photos in as well. Please, please, please do keep them coming in. They really do help me out quite a bit, um, especially with all the subjects that we've got coming up. Like I said, next week... Um, Next week is uh, how you store your crops. Um, uh, lots, lots of things like that as well. Um, we'll be back again next Sunday at six. I'm not on call next week, so there will be no, no stress about being here in time or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. As Chili Kate has said, thanks, Richard. Informative and entertaining as always. It's been a good chat. I really do enjoy these chats where we get the chance to share our opinions. Wonderful chat. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Enjoyed it. Uh, Lisa says, enjoyed it tonight again. Love, Lisa. No, thank you for joining in. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think these conversations really do are a lot of fun. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answers. I just want to find out how everybody does things in their own way and share that information out with everybody else and see where we are all going to be at. Like I say, next Sunday at 6 p.m. we will be back. Please do share your photos, your videos. Uh, and the main subject, the overriding subject is going to be how do you store your crops? But as always, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, Check out the Veg Grow Podcast Facebook group. If you're not already a member, please do check it out. We've got a page and group on Facebook. Um, at the moment, a lot of chat going on in the group. I tend to not so much add my own input. I like to let everyone else start the conversation off and chat amongst themselves. But I do see every single comment, just, just so everyone's aware. Right. I think that just about summarizes everything up except I haven't set everything up for leaving just yet. There we go. We'll be back here next Sunday at 6. So until then, please take care. <laughs>